this story real quick. It's found in the book of Luke, chapter 15. There was once this father who had two sons. Both of them worked very hard in the field. The father loved them. Both. Very much. He showed no difference in either one of those boys at all. One day, one of the boys came to his dad, and he had a request. Let me turn that music down just a little bit, and I'm going to grab me a couple of boys out of the audience who'd like to help me out. Riley, you just don't look like a boy to me. She's too pretty. Right. She's too pretty. She's too pretty. She's too pretty just to be a boy. You see, these two boys were brothers. How old are you? Nine. How old are you? Ten. Ten? Good. You get to be the older brother. Go on. One day, both of these brothers were out working in the field for their dad. And this young man here decides, I've had enough of this life. I'm sick of being here at home. I'm sick of working. I've had it. And he comes to his dad, and he asks his dad for a big favor. He said, I'm tired of waiting for you to die. I want half of my money right now so I can go off and have my own life. So his dad looked at him, and he said, is that really what you want, son? Is that really what you want? You really want your inheritance right now? and go and have your own life instead of staying here and working with me? He said, yeah, Dad, I'm sick of it. His dad says, okay, son, I'll tell you what. I'm going to sell half of my land, half of the farm, and I'm going to go ahead and give you your inheritance right now. You can do whatever you want. You go out on your own. But you always have a place here with me, son. And so his dad does that exact same thing. He sells it all. Sells half of the land, half of the animals. Gives his son this great big bag of gold and says, good luck, son. And his son tiptoed away, excited. He's like, yes, I'm free. Free, stay right there. His other son, his oldest son, his smart son, was a good boy. He was a loyal son. He never did anything wrong. Anytime his dad asked him to do something, he'd say, yes, sir. And he'd take off and go do it. He was a hard-working man. He tended those fields and those flocks because when his dad died, everything that was left was all his. And he thought, you know, dad may live another 20 or 30 years. And all this now is going to be mine now that my brother's gone. But he was mad at his brother. You know, if my brother was here, though, we could keep working this farm together, and we could grow this farm, and it could even be bigger, and I'd have some help. Now we've got to hire more servants to help do the job that my brother was supposed to be here doing. So, even though things was all his, sad to say, he still missed his brother just a little bit, but he was also a little resentful. So he went off to work hard, tend the fields and the flocks, I had to hire help. And he, on occasion, missed his little brother. Well, you stay right there and we'll get back to you in just a few minutes. But you see, his little brother, he had this big bag of gold. Man, I tell you what, he was ready to buy it. Oh, let me tell you. The first thing he did was he went out and found some cute little girls. That's what he did. That's right. Come on over here. I'm going to embarrass the fire out of you right now. All right. He found him some women. Oh, and women, let me tell you something. Women like a guy with money, right? 
Is that right, girls? How, you guys like a guy with money, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Buy you diamonds and buy you jewelry. Oh, no. Am I am I telling the truth? No. They yeah. love a guy with money. Well, <laughs> this guy knew it, and he flirted with all of the girls, and they wouldn't do, they didn't have nothing to do with him, till he said, "Check out what I got." And he shook this bag of gold in their face and said, looky here what I got. <gasps> well, they all flocked around him like he was Justin Bieber. I mean, it was just like, <laughs> oh, they loved him. Oh, boy, by that time, you were getting all the kisses, let me tell you. He had the attention of all the ladies. Mm. He had more women than what he even knew what to do with. Everywhere he went, one was following him. In fact, he had one for once in a while had to say, could you please just give me a little privacy? i got to go to the bathroom. The ladies were always hanging around. But not only were the ladies hanging around this young man right here, because he had the gold, there were some guys that really wanted to hang around him. But not for what you think. You see, there were some guys over here who he liked to buy a little alcohol for. Get him a little wine. Let them get drunk and have a good time. In fact, you had so much money that he decided, hmm, let me see here. I don't want to work anymore. I've got all this money and I don't want to work. But I may need some more money later on, so I need to grow my money. And he started thinking of ways to grow his money. He thought, hmm, if I get these guys good and drunk where they don't know nothing, we can gamble. And if I start gambling, I could grow my money because I could make my money work for me and I could take theirs away from them. And so that's what he does. He buys some of the finest wine in all of the streets. And he brings it back to his buddies and he says, Hey guys, I'll tell you what, why don't you come over to my place tonight? Bring your wallet. We'll have some fun. I'll supply the alcohol. Well, he gets all his buddies drunk. And they're all sitting back drinking wine. This is good stuff. And he goes, hey, I got an idea. How would you like to uh, do a little gambling? They were all for it. They were all excited. I was like, yeah, we'll do some gambling. Yeah, first night was pretty innocent. He made a few bucks. Tucked it back in his gold bag. <laughs> this worked. In fact, this was working so well, he thought, I can't keep staying in these expensive hotels every night. I need to do something a little better. I'm going to buy myself a house. And so he bought one of the fanciest houses that money could buy. And he told all the women friends, come over anytime you want. There'll be rooms for everybody. He told all of his men friends, he said, hey, Come over, we'll party all night, where the wine will never stop flowing and the ladies will never stop going. And man, did they have a time. Well, one day his little plan didn't work out so well because he was getting a little lazy and he was enjoying the fruit of the wine just a little bit too much. And he started getting drunk himself. One day he found himself passed out with no gold. And he was broke. He was busted. He had nothing. But when the money ran out, guess what else ran out? The girls. The girls ran out. And the guys. And the guys. And the they all left. And there he stood, all alone, busted and broke, no job and nothing. Might want to hang that bottom lip out just a little bit more. Maybe somebody will feel sorry for you. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't even look pitiful. You're so broke you can't even look pitiful. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. He's busted. He's got nothing. Hang right there. We'll get back to you in just a minute. Well, big brother's over here tending dad's field. Dad comes over and says, Tyler, I'm so proud of you. You're such a hard working man. One day, son, all this is going to be all yours. And you deserve it. You're such a good boy. His father loved him. But somewhere back in dad's mind, he couldn't help but think what was going on with this little boy who left home. You know, you think that the dad would be upset, angry, 
My son left me. My son got in my face and said, I don't want to live here with you anymore, Dad. I don't want nothing to do with you. But his dad, his dad couldn't bear the thought of his son being out there alone. Because he just knew when he left. All he wanted to do was party. He was tired of working. He was tired of being responsible. And so his dad knew he wasn't going to be responsible with all of that money. And he knew one day, one day, anything could happen. In fact, that kind of a lifestyle, when you're partying and you're drinking and you're gambling, like his father knew would happen, that kind of lifestyle could get you dead. In fact, all you got to do is flash the cash and some people are out to kill you. So the father, the whole time, he's thinking, God, take care of my son. Protect my son. Take care of him. And his oldest son was thinking, a dirty rat. If he hadn't left here, I'd have help out here in the field, and here I am doing this all by myself. But then he would think, hope he's okay. Had mixed feelings, mixed emotions. Brother left. The father should have been angry at this boy for standing up in his face and saying, I don't want nothing to do with you, Dad, or nothing to do with this farm. I want out of here. I want to have a good life. I want to do whatever I want. Well, he got his wish. He got his will. He found himself broke. Now it's time to go to work again. He has nothing. <laughs> in fact, He'd been out of work for so long and out of money for so long, his clothes started looking raggedy. Without a house, no place to take a bath. The boy started having some really bad armpit smells coming out from underneath him. It was pretty stinky. He thought, I can't find any work at all. Finally, there was one guy who finally cut the young man a break. He said, I tell you what, I got some pigs over there. I'll let you feed them. I'll give you a penny a day. We'll take care of the pigs. Well, it wasn't much, but it was better than nothing. One day he was feeding the pigs. You want to come feed the pigs? Want to feed the pigs? Want to feed the pigs? He was feeding the pigs one day. How about feeding the birthday cake? Feed the birthday cake. He was feeding the pigs. And you never believe what happened. One day as he was feeding the pigs, he found out something. These pigs are eating better than I am. And he started to reach down into the bucket of slop, the garbage that he was feeding to the pigs. And he took a bite. Go taste the garbage. Hey, you volunteered for this job. Taste the garbage. Mm. Disgusting, isn't it? While he was eating the pig slop, he thought to himself, my dad's got servants that are living better life than what I am. Maybe I could go home and tell my dad I'm sorry. And he could just treat me like one of his servants. And I, at least I could eat. I'd eat something besides pig slop. And maybe I could get a bath. So that's what he did. He decided to come home. And his dad saw him coming. And his dad fell down on his knees and he held his arms out. Come running to daddy right here. And he came running to daddy. And he said, dad, he said, dad, I I'm sorry. I should have never left you. I should have never done that. I'm sorry, dad. If you'll just make me one of your servants, I'll work for you. I just need something to eat. His dad looked at him and he goes, oh, you look so poor, son. But I'm so glad you're alive. And his dad gave him a great big hug. And he said, I tell you what, I, he told his servants, he said, go get the best robe I've got in the house and give it to my boy. In fact, while you're in there, get my ring. I'm going to put it on his finger. I'm going to put some shoes on his feet. And we're going to kill that calf that we've been fattening up for our holidays. And we're going to kill that calf and we're going to have a party because my son was once was lost and he is now found. I thought you were dead and you're alive. I'm so excited to have you back in my life. Life. And that's what they did. Well, 
There was music playing and everybody was jamming because you came back home. Everybody's partying. All the friends and neighbors came back and there he was. And this young man was out in the field working off his fanny. And he said, Do you hear music playing back at the house? One of the servants came by and he said, ha, Yeah, they're playing music. Your brother's back home. He said, He's what? Yeah, they're back home. Everybody's having a big party. And your dad, he killed the fatty calf. Oh, man. Bertha is gone and we are having one big giant party. He was ticked. I mean, he was hot. Dad's back at home partying with the younger boy. And he comes storming back in from the field. Come on, be mad. <laughs> right, look like... A mad Tim Conway, okay. He came back and he was mad. He shook his finger in his dad's face and he said, what do you think killing the fatted cap and giving him the good clothes for? And his dad went, oh, calm down. Calm down, look, your brother's home. Check it out, he's home, he's okay. Besides, when I die, all this is yours anyway. He's just home. He's going to stay here. You'll take care of him. But all of this is yours. And if he wants to make it out on his own, he can. The good thing is, he's back home. Let's be happy for him. Let's rejoice that he's not dead because he could have, he could have been dead now. And his brother, after a little while, got used to the idea. Realized that it was the right thing to do. And the Father had forgiven him. Now this story is a story that Jesus told to his disciples. It's kind of been a story that we have told and that Jesus had told as a parable many, many times. But the Father in this story would represent God. This here would represent a man who's been a Christian his entire life. And this young man here would represent somebody who had been a Christian, who'd walked away from God, made some mistakes, and came back home. Which one of them do you think that the Father loved the most? They loved them both the same. You're right. God loves us all the same. Whether we've been with Him all this time or whether we've walked off and done things that we shouldn't do, God still loves us both. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, He'll always love you. But the Bible says, he that committed sins is of the devil. Because the devil has been committing sin since the very beginning. At what point did he stop being of the devil? At what point? Does anybody know? When he came home. When he came home, he quit being of the devil. And he became who he was supposed to be just like the other son who never left. The reward's still the same, but what would have happened if he'd have never came home? He'd have probably died, huh? If he'd have never came home, he would have probably died and been miserable up until then. What happens if your friends or your family who doesn't know Jesus don't come home? They're going to die, and they'll die in their sins. 